Today we're going to be talking about Lesson 1.5, Estimation Strategies. So if you haven't already guessed, this lesson is going to explore different ways to estimate. And some tips that I have for you, one, you need to understand that there are many different ways to estimate. Two, each method is useful for different reasons depending upon what kind of problem that you have. And three, the method you choose should be based on the context of the problem you are trying to solve. So if you can try to remember those three tips, those will help you determine which method to use for which kind of problem. So let's get started with some practice. I have a word problem here that says on Sunday, 463 people were at the lake. On Monday, 226 people were at the lake and 312 were there on Tuesday. Estimate how many people in all were at the lake. So, we need to think about ways to estimate for this particular problem. And as you will recall, the vocab words that we had, we had front-end estimation, we had round to a particular value, and we had close to estimation. So we need to determine which of those methods would we use. So we're going to start with rounding to a particular value. And let's say that the particular value that you're going to round to is the nearest hundred. So when we look at 463, if we round that to the nearest hundred, it's going to change to 500. We look at 226 it's going to change to 200 and 312 is going to change to 300. So if we add all of those together, we get roughly 1,000 would be our estimate if we round to a particular value for that problem. Now, if we use front-end estimation, I'm going to move, sorry about that, let's erase that. I'm going to move this out of the way. If we use front-end estimation, that means that the digit in the highest place value remains the same while all the digits in the smaller place values will change. So, our 463, the 4 will stay the same, and then the 6 and the 3 will turn to zeros. Your 226, the 2 will stay the same, and the remainder of those numbers will change to zero. And then again with your 312, your 3 will remain the same, the 1 and the 2 will change to zeros. We add those together. We get 900 with that particular estimation method. Now, our close to estimation, if I can squeeze this in here, is when we look for a number that is close to the value of the original number but it's easier to work with. So we're looking for friendly numbers. So when we look at the number 463, we want to look for something that's close to that number that's easier to work with. So 450 would be my go-to there. If we look at 226, Close to number would be 225, and 312 
my close to number would be 300. So when we add all of those together, I'm running out of space here, so I'm going to move it over here. In the ones column, I'm going to get a 5. Tens, I'm going to get a 7. And 9 in the hundreds column. So as you can see with each of these methods, I've gotten a different answer because I have rounded or estimated using a different method. But all of them are somewhat close. They're in the same range. So we've got 1,000 for this method, 900 for this one, and 975 for this one. The exact answer is 1,001, which I'm going to squeeze that in right there. So the exact answer is 1,001. So as you can see, each of those estimation methods were somewhat close to that actual answer. And that's what we want. So when looking at this problem and trying to determine which estimation method is the best one, we would probably pick rounding to a particular value because that was the one that was closest to our actual answer. Now with this particular problem that we are going to do now is a number story that uses the same numbers that were used in the previous problem but it has a different context that will influence how we should estimate. So let's take a look at the problem. Rob, Brian, and Ari need at least 950 popsicles for the school picnic. Rob bought 463, Brian bought 226, and Ari bought 312. Do they have enough popsicles? So, our estimation strategies If we use the rounding to estimate, we would come up with 500 plus 200 plus 300 is going to give us 1,000. If we use front end estimation, we're going to get 400 plus 200 plus 300, which gives us 900. Or if we use close to estimation, we're going to have 450 plus 225 plus 300, which equals 975. Now, we already know since this problem uses the same numbers as the last one that the exact answer is 1,001. And you probably can see that they're going to have more than enough popsicles. So which method gives a more precise estimate. Okay, so when you look at those, which methods give a more precise estimate? Remember, our actual answer is 1001. So we would probably say that rounding and close to estimation gives us the closest answers for this one. Is it always desirable to make the most precise estimate possible? What do you think? No, it is not. It depends on the context. If you need a general idea of a number size, a slightly less precise method is fine. But if you need to know if you have enough of something, you need a more precise estimate. So in this case, the choice of estimation method is crucial to finding a reasonable answer. So our close to estimation method is not close enough, so we would not want to use that one. So if we were wanting something more precise, Which estimation strategy would you use? 
Hopefully you picked the rounding to estimate. To summarize what we've talked about today, we learned three different methods for estimation. Round to certain value, front end estimation, close to estimation, and we also learned the method that we use depends upon how precise we need to be in the problem that we were given.